everyone. Hey Good guys. to see you guys. Thanks for joining us. We are here at Adobe Life. My name is Julia Masalska, and I'm going to be your host for today. And I'm hosting the very talented Lisa Marie. Yesterday, we have started off with some yes. illustrations and fresco. And today, she's going to be continuing with that a little bit. And then we're going to jump into Illustrator and make final adjustments. So stay tuned for that. Thanks, everyone who's joining. I can see there's uh, Paco, Alex, Jason, Susan, Wade. Good to see you all, guys. Thanks for joining us. It's going to be a super fun stream. I'm really, really excited to see the end results. Lisa Marie is going to produce. So um, let's go over quick, uh, quick things first. So in about 90 minutes, we're going to review some of your daily creative challenge submissions in Illustrator. So make sure to submit those and you will find the tab to the challenge submission above the chat window. So if you click challenge, you will find all the uh, links where to submit and you will also be guided to our Discord chat um, if you could quickly take a look at my uh, at my screen, I can show you the the daily creative challenge. Okay, so there we go. So here we'll find the little button that says, hi, Julia, take the challenge. If I click that, I already automatically um, get guided to the Discord channel. And this is how it looks like. This is our community channel where we share our work and give each other feedback. We learn from each other. And as you can see, there's already some amazing work. Thanks guys for um, being around and for, for doing this. This is so amazing to see. And here on the left side, you will find other tabs, not only the challenge tab, you will find uh, ask a question, tips and tricks, career advice, and so on. And you can even give each other a portfolio review or, you know, ask other questions. So this is a really great platform. And we have some mentors uh, from our Adobe community who are going to give you some feedback. But of course, feel free to give each other feedback because, you know, we want to learn from each other and share our knowledge um, together. All right, while we are on my screen, um, let's also quickly take a look at today's challenge. So today's challenge is going to be illustrated characters. Super fun. Mm -hmm. Illustrated character using simple geometric shapes, gain and the pen tool. And here you can watch the video and get started if you click on these buttons. All right, Lisa Marie, let's get All right. to introduce you uh, <laughs> once again. Yes, so um, welcome to day two, guys. I'm so excited to um, jump right back into our um, illustration. So um, again, my name is Lisa. I um, am the face behind Made by Lisa Marie. So I'm a freelance illustrator and graphic designer, and I've been um, working mostly on merchandise um, in the outdoor industry and other various industries as well. Um, but so today we're um, finishing up our badge designs, which are these really versatile um, uh, design pieces that incorporate illustration. We're also going to have some typography today that um, once we finish up in fresco, I'm going to show you guys how you can seamless seamlessly go from fresco to Adobe Illustrator and um, add some typography. And then if we have some time, we'll pop over into Photoshop as well. Um, do a little hat trick with all the Adobe apps and um, add some texture. So um, yeah, let's let's get right into it. Um, so I think we are um, finishing up on the colors, um, adding some colors today. So yesterday we we outlined all of our um, illustrations, as you can see, and they're all these these little badge designs. Um, so we're gonna go in and continue coloring in all of the. The rest of the four pieces um and yeah so i'd love even um as i'm working i would love like your feedback on um what colors you think i should use at um for each piece i'm, I'm going to be using a limited color palette um because i think that keeps things really nice and clean but um this is also kind of like the fun part where you get to play around with what combination looks good and whatnot so yeah super excited to to jump on into this Yay! I already love the designs you've created yesterday. I'm so excited to see the other ones in color as well, especially yeah. if you add some texture in the end. It's going to be amazing. Totally. And thanks to everyone. Thanks to everyone who is joining in the chat. I see Andrew, you again is here, Isabel, uh, Rebecca, Ezra, John, so many people. Thanks everyone for joining. It's going to be a fun stream, very colorful. Um, cool. 
Yes. So yeah, I'm, I'm still going to be working again all in vector brushes since mm -hmm. I know that I'll be popping back over into Illustrator. So that's, mm -hmm. um, you want to make sure that you're, you're working in vector brushes so that you can um, actually like tweak it in Illustrator. So that's just like a side note for those that are wanting to learn how to use Fresco and Illustrator um, simultaneously. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and Tim, good point. Thank you so much for uh, noticing this, but we didn't have the Daily Creative Challenge in Illustrator um, um, introduced yet. So we kind of uh, have to stick to Photoshop right now, although we're kind of working in illustrations. But um, I, I believe Paul Trani introduced the uh, Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge now. So please submit your Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge. If we can quickly jump onto my uh, screen, I can show you guys the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge page. It's if you go onto behance.net slash challenge slash Photoshop and here you will find the Photoshop ones. Okay, and uh, here you can also get started. And the Photoshop one today is glitch effect. Feel free to rewatch the video of uh, Paul Trani and, um, and submit your challenge. So those are the ones that we are going to be reviewing. Thanks, Tim, good point. All right. Cool. I really love the the colors that you're using. I think they're so amazing. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I definitely. Um, you know, I was kind of saying this yesterday. I I've been really um, affected by just like whatever season we're in. So when it's like springtime and summertime, I tend to um, change my color palette to really bright hues. And um, mm -hmm. and in the the fall and winter, it's normally a little bit more like earth tone pieces, but. Um, yeah, I'm just, I've been loving the bright colors lately. Yeah, I really love them too. Thank and you. we have Vanille here. Good to see you. And Teresa, hello from Houston, Texas. Yeah, yes. guys, let me know where you guys are from. Anthony's from Austin, Texas. And a lot of people from Texas here today. That's awesome. It's awesome. I love Texas. <laughs> Yay. Cool. Amazing. I'm also excited to see the daily creative challenges today with a glitch effect. I love oh, using the glitch yes. effect. So much fun. Totally. Yeah, and feel free to uh, follow Lisa Marie on Instagram. It's made by Lisa Marie. I dropped the um, handle in the in the chat. So um, let me see if I can even drop a link for you guys so it's easier. Yes, awesome. Yeah, and if, if you guys have any questions about illustration or freelancing um, or graphic design, I'm always available to talk. Yeah. So send me a message, DM me. Um, yeah, I'm here for you guys. Or we can talk about it even now. And we can talk about it now. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, send me your questions right now and uh, let's get to chatting. All right, I've posted a link to... I don't know why it's not linked. It's weird. Why anyway? Oh, Tim already posted one. Great. Pat is here from Luxembourg. Ooh. Cool. Baron is from India. Clever is Clever Devlin is from San Antonio, Texas. Nice. We have Switzerland, Bulgaria, Florida, Denver, Colorado. Shayna, good good to see you. Yeah, I'm also in Denver, Colorado. <laughs> Isn't that cool how we can all meet up? And we're all online, you know, but we can also be in the same place. That's awesome. I love Switzerland as well. I heard you say someone was from Switzerland. What what part of Switzerland? I'm curious. Yeah, let us know. A junior Ferreira is from Switzerland. Okay, this is actually, I was saying yesterday, this is loosely based on the Matterhorn. Um, so yeah, a little shout out to Switzerland there. Yay. Beth is saying, hi, Lisa Marie. I love your art. That's awesome. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Thank you so are much. so sweet. Yeah, Brazil, Mexico City in the house. And we have a question here. How do you choose colors for your projects? That's a great question. Yeah, so um, it's funny. I I feel like a lot of the, the way I choose colors is um, really just like with I kind of go with my gut feeling. So I'll, I'll be kind of walking around paying attention um, to what 
I like, you know, what you naturally gravitate to. So um, it can be, I can be walking around um, and see a t-shirt that I think is like, oh, I love the color scheme of that and I'll take a picture of it. Um, and I kind of do this and gather these different color schemes um, and start to notice patterns of what I like and what, what works really well. And then I'll take that and actually, um, sometimes I'll even upload it right into the, um, right into Photoshop or whatnot and get like the Pantone or hex colors for that. And I'll, I'll actually start using colors that way. Um, so yeah, it's kind of like, I, I almost collect colors, which sounds kind of funny, but, um, yeah, it's just this, just noticing what you gravitate to and, um, really paying attention, I guess, um, to, it's almost like a color hunt. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, the, and honestly, my, um, I'll, I'll work on like a new color palette um, for like a couple of weeks um, and just kind of really pay attention to it and really try to find what what feels true to me. And then um, and then I'll start using that as a limited color palette for the next couple months. So it is like a very gradual process. Awesome. Yeah, I feel like every designer has a color library and shape library and, yeah. you know, all those libraries for inspiration. <laughs> Absolutely. And we have Scott, um, uh, I missed part one yesterday. It looks like Lisa is sticking to just to just the vector brushes in Fresco. Yes. So Lisa has been working uh, with vector brushes yesterday and she's still continuing working with those today. But I believe uh, you wanted to add some texture later on with, uh, with some pixel brushes, is that right? Yeah, I might either do the texture with the pixel brushes or I might show you guys in Photoshop how to use that, um, kind of depending. Um, on yeah where this where this takes okay. us today but if, if you guys yeah. want me to um use the pixel brushes for texture just so that you can see that um we we can totally do that so that would be awesome it's all it's all up to you we want to see your process so you're <laughs> you're the one deciding but yeah i think um it's really cool that fresco has three different kinds of brushes we have the live brushes we have the pixel brushes and we have the vector brushes so you have all these options you know to create artwork and uh, whenever you kind of use uh, different types of brushes they're always going on a separate layer so um, that that all, fresco makes sure that you don't um, kind of conflict the pixel brushes with the vector brushes so you can still add, add, edit the vectors afterwards in illustrator so yeah right yeah and that's a big reason why i'm mostly sticking to vector brushes today is because i know i will be kind of tweaking things in illustrator but if i would just be staying in fresco or um if these weren't as like designy like graphic designy type of illustrations then i would definitely um, be using more of the pixel brushes because they do have that really cool texture to them but yeah and now since we're using the vector brushes we'll be able to adjust the uh, vectors and adjust the colors and so on so it's way easier to kind of modify the design afterwards and also of course to scale it i think that exactly. is very important oh, if yeah. you're working if you're working for a certain client um, sometimes they want to have a vector file let's say it's a logo and um, they want to put it on a huge banner so it needs to be scalable and that's the reason also to use uh, vector brushes yep. galina has a question also Yes, what's up? Uh, question for Julia. Hi, what do you do? Are you a designer? I love to hear more. Question for Lisa. How long have you been making badges? I would say Lisa go first and then sure. I'll dive in. Yeah, so I guess the badge design, um, I probably have been doing this for maybe about a year and a half. Um, so I have a background in <clears throat> um, mostly doing a lot of illustrations for merchandise and um you know uh like editorial illustrations different things like that so i i really felt like this was kind of like the next step that really branches illustrations to more of the graphic design world um so yeah just just about a year and a half i've really been playing with badge designs in particular Awesome. And about me, I'm a designer and an educator. As a designer, I've been working since over five years now, and I'm concentrating mostly on branding and packaging. So those are my uh, my specific topics. But I also really love um, to do some illustration work, but that's not something, you know, I'm specified in. 
But yeah, I'm also very inspired by the work of Lisa. <laughs> yeah, it's really nice. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I was gonna say, I actually have a fun question for you. So I saw that you did some work with um, Panda Express. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, so I've been working with this agency in the yeah. Bay Area, and um, they have brands like uh, Panda Express or Jameson Whiskey. So um, yeah, I did I did work with them on on projects like that, mostly ad campaigns, you know, uh, to promote some kind of some kind of activity that's going on, you know, some dish coming out or, yeah. you know, if you have some, like, if you have, for example, Chinese new year, they're making promotions and they're doing huge ad campaigns. That's so fun. Oh yeah. That's yeah. Panda, fun. Panda Express is like my husband's go-to cheat meal. Really? Like when he's just like craving something that, you know, he, he, he loves, he loves Panda. So we were yeah. excited about that. You know, fun fact, I've never even tried Panda Express. Really? <laughs> Not once in my life. I have. I always wanted to go. Every time I pass by uh, the store or their uh, restaurants, yeah. I always see the logo and I'm like, oh, I've seen this logo so many times. And even, and even you know, when, I'm, uh, when we're driving somewhere and, and I see a banner ad and I've been working on it and I know, okay, uh, I've been designing this and I should actually try that food because it does... When I'm when I'm making, you know, when I'm, uh, for example, retouching their photos and stuff, yeah. it's, it does look delicious. And they also <laughs> want me to make it delicious, look delicious, obviously. But yeah, fun fact. Yeah, right before. that's so funny. Well, I recommend the orange chicken <laughs> if, you, yeah. if you do. I so. think it is very popular. Yeah. Cool. Um, all right. Helen, I can understand Russian and I love that you're that you're from russia but please write it in english so we can all understand what you're asking but let's let me quickly translate um helen is as, is asking if you can use this program on a, on a wacom or on a tablet so uh, fresco is available i believe for the ipad so you can use it on the ipad and you can use your wacom computer to uh design an illustrator so for mm -hmm. that i would use illustrator or even uh, maybe photoshop if you um if you work more uh, pixel based so it all depends on your style but if you're working on it on the computer using your wacom um you can um yeah use illustrator or photoshop all right and uh, there is a question also about uh, from um arka praba uh julia what do you mostly use for packaging which software to make mock-ups so um to design packaging i use illustrator because um first what what you design first is basically let me see if i have an example you basically design a flat like this so this is basically how the file looks like an illustrator and then when you print it um when you print it you kind of put it all together and make a prototypes so um i start an illustrator and if i have to make a mock-up i can also do it in 3d software like dimension or i can uh, i can do it in photoshop of course if i find a similar uh, packaging so i can apply my design you know i save my designs to the cc libraries and then i can just apply them onto the uh, mock-up but i see a lot of uh, you know restrictions if you're working with uh, mock-ups because usually you will never find the perfect packaging that you are working on. So sometimes it's great to just create your own uh, 3D model and put your design on top of it and render it so it looks very realistic. And you can even modify you know, 3D uh, models, but that's not in Dimension. I use a render for that. A blender, sorry. <laughs> okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Kevin is saying, looks great, Lisa. Your style is fantastic. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's see if there's any more questions. Galina is saying, that's awesome. I've been tutoring and teaching graphic design and animation for a little over a year, but I'm always looking at learning new drawing apps so I can work on my drawing skills. Love Fresco. Yeah, I totally agree. It's an amazing application. Yeah, it really is. And it's, I mean, it's wild that it just came out, you know, about not even a full year ago now, right? And I just, I feel like it's already just upgraded my workflow so much. Mm -hmm. 
Arka Papa is, um, as, is asking, can we please have a live on package designs with all the dimensions and specificities? Yes, I would love to. I'm so passionate about uh, packaging design and I would be even able to like uh, show you the whole process from one, from the beginning to the end. I would yeah, love that. Awesome. Let's see, we'll have to discuss if that's something Adobe Live will be interested in. It would be great though. I'm also very big on prototyping. I think it's very important to kind of uh, you know, to hold something in your hand and see how, like, what are the parts that you can see of a packaging and how you hold it. You know, this is obviously made for a man's hand because it's really, um, you know, it's pretty large for spice uh, packaging. Well, I can go on, go on and on on that. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. You know, I really like the combination also if you um, are doing illustrations like that and then you kind of apply them to, to a commercial design like a packaging. That would be also great to see. Oh, uh, Paco is saying we have a packaging design live stream starting tomorrow. That's great. See? Well, there we go. You can uh, check out the schedule be below the window. You will see the Adobe Live schedule and you can also subscribe. There is a little blue subscribe button. So you get notified whenever we're live. And um, let's see what is um, what is going to be there. Okay, packaging, packaging, packaging. Oh yeah, there we go. Uh, with Jeremy Slagle, brand identity and package design for a pet accessory brand. Yeah, that's um, that's awesome. I really love it. I'm interested. I want to watch it. <laughs> Guys, feel free to. Um, to watch it yeah Teresa is also saying packaging design will be an interesting life I agree yeah I love packaging design and also I feel like packaging design is something where you can really um you know you can really spend a lot of time <clears throat> creating creating packaging especially if it's combined with uh, uh with branding you know start working on a branding project and then kind of um develop a package as well that's what I mostly do that's my that's my thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I haven't I haven't done a whole lot of packaging design, but I would definitely be interested in learning more. Um, I know I always get like excited when I see stuff in stores that has have just like the coolest like branding packaging and yeah, it definitely makes a difference. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Awesome. And Baron is asking, what's about the beta version of Illustrator? Um, I think there is nothing published yet, but hopefully soon. I can tell you that it's great. <laughs> it's super fun to play with and it opens way new doors. Um, so you can probably imagine that you can use the pen, you know, to uh, create graphics. So I never used a Wacom tablet in my life for creating, um, you know, designs in, in Vector. Um, so, because the reason for that is because I don't like sketching somewhere else and, look, and looking at the screen. I cannot yeah. um, get the best shapes if I'm not looking where I'm sketching. I, I'm the same way. I tried for like several years. I would go back and try to wake them again and it just was so almost like awkward. And then once... Yeah. Once the Apple Pencil came out and we can draw on the iPad now, like it's just been a total game changer. Exactly. And now imagine Illustrator. I can't even imagine. on the I'm, iPad. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> yeah. like Christmas. Alison is saying packaging is how I make all of my purchasing decisions. <laughs> nice. I have to say I'm also highly influenced by packaging. I am too. Shayna is asking, what I, which iPad are you using? Yeah, so this is, oh man, which one? It's a couple of years old, but it is it is the iPad Pro. So it's the big one, um, which I just like that. Um, obviously, it gives you as much screen um, as, as possible, but you can still obviously travel with this, which is really nice. Like, I'll often... Um, work on a plane or if I'm in a, on a road trip or something, um, which I find myself in on road trips often, um, I can still draw, you know, right in the passenger yeah. seat. So it's big, but it's, it's still, um, 
like maneuverable and you can take yeah. it anywhere. So yeah, same here. I'm using the pro, um, the 20 point 12.9 inch with a pencil. So yeah, it's, it's ha has been a game changer for me also since I got it. It's amazing. Yeah. I love the iPad, especially if I'm like sitting in the living room or if I'm sitting on the balcony and I want to design something real quick. So I open my iPad and, you know, it's cool. But it's different than working on the computer, that's for sure. It kind of opens you the, you know, the room for creativity and to kind of to sketch more. I'm usually sketching more on the iPad than I do you know, um, editorial design. Yeah, totally. I feel like it, it really like, um, bridged the gap for me between more of that, like fine art and graphic design. Um, because mm -hmm. you really, it feels like you're sketching, like it, it feels so similar to a sketchbook, um, which yeah. it just blows my mind. And I feel like yeah. that really just happened in the last few years because, um, yeah, beforehand, like I was saying with like the Wacom tablets, like it just was not the same as like just sketching in a in a sketchbook with like, mm -hmm. you know, regular pencil and paper. So, um, yeah, I love it. I agree. There is a question from Mashrab. Is there any tool to fill area with one click? Yes, there is actually a bucket tool. So you can uh, create a, a closed shape. It just has to be perfectly closed because if there is just one part missing in the circle, if the circle is not complete, if it's not, or the shape is not complete and not closed, then the paint bucket kind of fills the whole surface. So um, yeah, but there is, um, there is actually on the left side, you will find the paint bucket. Yeah, I think it's right over there. I don't know why I just, I don't normally use that, but. Mm -hmm. um, can you show it off real quick so we can sure. see? Oh, whoops. And see, that's a Yeah, there we go. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll have to go into the shape. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it is possible. It's, it's just, I feel like if you're working on different layers, you might, you know, confuse the layers and it can get really complicated. Yeah. And plus, this is so relaxing. It's almost like meditation, you know, to color things. It's, it's like when it you were really a is. child. When you were a child and you were coloring a color book. A hundred percent. Yeah. No, I, I do feel like this this stage of like the design is totally just like an adult coloring book like session where I'm just sitting here coloring. Very relaxing. Cody is saying you should you should do a Chicago Bulls uh, illustration in honor to um wait, where is it? Wait, wait, wait. Uh, in honor to um, in honor of Michael Jordan docu series currently on ESPN. Yes. Oh my gosh. I I don't know about you guys, um, but I am such an MJ fan. So I've been <laughs> eating up that documentary. Um, for those that don't know, it's called um, <laughs> Last Dance. It's on ESPN every Sunday, two hour episodes. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it, it's been giving me like all the like nostalgic vibes of growing up in the 90s in Chicago and I mean that was just like the king of Chicago he was the king of Chicago he still pretty much is um but yeah it's it's been great <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome you know what's funny I remember this old old photo of myself when I was like five or six years old in yeah. Ukraine and I was wearing this Chicago Bulls uh um over how do you call it overall if it's like a sweater and sweatpants Okay, wait, a sweater, pants. Like connected? Oh, like a like a tracksuit? Yeah, like a tracksuit. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I had a tracksuit from uh Chicago Bulls and I had no idea about Chicago Bulls whatsoever. Yeah. I love <laughs> and it. And I found and I found those and there was a huge logo in the front, like really, really big. Yeah. And I found this picture later on and I was like, oh my god, this is funny. And I had those 90s, you know, um, uh, high, high, um, Adidas sneakers. Oh yeah. The high tops. I look like, yeah, 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 I look like I'm, you know, <laughs> I love it. I look so funny. Yeah. Well, I, um, I mean, I grew up, my dad is, you know, the biggest sports fan. I think I know. So everything was bulls, bears, cubs, um, Blackhawks. And so, um, 
yeah, we were joking that he would, when he would tuck me in at night, he would sing, um, like, take me out to the ball game or, you know, all the different, <laughs> all the different sports things. So I definitely grew up with a love of sports and mm-hmm. yeah, so this, the last dance documentary <laughs> has been fun. I should do a little um, illustration for that. So I definitely, yeah. I love all the 90s, um, like, style as well, which I know. It's I kind love of, it too, yeah. It's been coming back so much too. Uh-huh. That'd yeah. Be cool. Oops. Yeah, and we have a question from Arka. I mess up his name all the time. Arka Prabha. Hopefully, this was right. Okay, um, how to survive as a broke designer? Any leads? Lisa Marie, I think it's a very good question. I feel like everybody has been through that. So, what do you what do you think? Um. Oh man. So I would say, well, first off, um, I. Th- I think that if you're looking into um, freelancing, I think maybe that's what you're referring to. I would definitely have a, a separate job to um, continue to be able to support yourself while you're building up your freelancing clients. Um, I start. I started freelancing, um, gosh, maybe like seven or eight years ago. And so I've only been freelancing full-time for four and a half years. So that shows mm-hmm. you that overlap of time where I was working um, at different jobs. And, um, so you definitely, you want to be able to, um, for sure support yourself. You don't want to be in a, in a situation where you're, you're, um, you know, not able to pay rent. Um, but with that, then once you, once you're going, I would say, um, one of the best things that I've learned is to, um, like make the thing that you want to create, like what you want to get hired for that you want to create. So keep, if you're looking to um, do logo designs or something, um, keep on putting out like logo design. So give in, and you can say that it's a self-initiated project, um, but like make a new one, like once a day and put it out on Instagram, on Behance, on, you know, social platforms and just keep on putting your work out there. And, um, So people can see like, oh, okay, that is what this person can offer. Um, So you want to you want to be really obvious about your skill set and also continue to to talk about it, um, put it out there because or else people don't know. Um, And also another thing that I think really helped me was kind of like what I was just touching on, but um, that you want to you want to put work out there that is marketable um, for people to hire you for. So if the difference between um, maybe just sharing like your sketchbook um, pieces that are more like, you know, cool drawings, but um, people aren't exactly sure what to do with that, you can show that cool drawing on a t-shirt and be like, okay, this is, that's what that that could be used for. That's what um, someone could hire me for. So you wanna just be very obvious um, and yeah so that's and market yourself that's what i would say and if we quickly share to my screen i wanted to share something with you guys it's the adobe creative residency community fund and um um, so the creative residency community fund um is giving out one million dollars to to the creative community and it can be anyone from any country all you have to do is um here all the here's the eligibility you have to be proficient in english and you have to be at least 18 years old but you don't need a degree so um this site you can find i think uh, tim might uh, post this one in the in the um comments yeah i think tim already posted that one if you scroll up a little bit. Um, so here you can basically check out um, if you're if you're eligible and um, also um, it's for people who are doing either video, photography, photo art, graphic design, illustration, 3D motion design or product and interface design. And especially uh, for people who are willing to work on the personal project um, during um, this hard time, you know, and I think this goes on up till uh, until the end of the year. And there is application, um, um, deadlines here June 1st September 7th and then so there's multiple processes that they're going to do up until April 5th 21 so you have multiple chances maybe um, to um, you know to participate and at the bottom of the page you will find the application forms um, 
yeah so make sure to check it out if you're if you're planning on working on a personal project over um, this year then this is definitely something you should take a look at yeah that's amazing and i love that it's you know it's not only for the us it's for all the countries so even if you're from india or from you know wherever you are um, absolutely our <laughs> rabbi is saying adobe is like our godfather <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And Tim is also saying in addition to the fund that you get, you also get a one year uh, free subscription for the Creative Cloud, which is also amazing. Wow. Also a couple hundred dollars worth. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. Very generous. Yeah. And Kevin is asking, Lisa, what types of brands have you done work for? Yeah, so I have... Um, done a lot in the outdoor industry. Um, so brands like um, that you would see at an REI, such as I actually recently just did um, all of um, Cool's uh, graphic t-shirts for their women's collection. So Cool is, uh, it's called K-U-H-L, it's um, a German word, but they're based out of uh, Park City, um, Utah. And um, so yeah, all, I did all of their women's graphic tees. I've also done some work with um, Patagonia at um, uh, doing some custom graphic tees for um, the Chicago location, as well as Parks Project, who they're based in California. Um, and they they basically make um, different merchandise, lots of, lots of graphic tees and um, hats and whatnot. Um, and then they actually give back a, a portion of their proceeds to help fund cleaning up parks um, around the country. So I, I love working with people, especially that have some type of like give back. Mm -hmm. um, but they're great. They're um, they're actually they've really broken out of even just the outdoor industry there. You can find them in Urban Outfitters and um, like free people and all, all different types of places like that. So I love working with brands that kind of have that crossover between like the outdoor world and more of like the, the urban world. Um, but yeah, so those yeah. are, those are a handful of, um, clients. Awesome. Yeah. That is very specific. I think it's, uh, it's important to kind of find something specific to uh, put your focus on just because then you know what type of work to put into your portfolio, right? It's, it makes it easier to satisfy your clients. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think able to know like, okay, that is what that person can do. And I think that's been such a helpful way um, that I've been able to get continual um, work is because um, I really have tried, I've learned that like, okay, I, I can't just be the jack of all trades. It's, it's actually more helpful to really offer, um, like to do one or two things and um, really focus on honing in that skill. Yeah. Okay, so let me share my uh, my thoughts on that. So I'm, um, I've been also working as a freelance designer, so I kind of had to get my own clients from everywhere. So I think there's multiple things that kind of play a role to attract new clients. And one thing is your online presence. So you have to definitely have some kind of online portfolio and maybe even have something more constant where you're sharing something every day, like an Instagram page, um, Behance page, definitely very helpful. You can also get a, um, a, a port uh, Adobe portfolio of, through Behance where you kind of have your own website um, with only your projects that you know, you can select some of those you have on Behance, activate them, and they'll be shown in a separate website. So that's also great. And then uh, what I found really, and it's also free, which is amazing. It comes with a subscription. I think you can create up to three portfolios, online portfolios. And um, what I found really helpful and useful is to uh, go on Google Business and register yourself as a business, as a local business, meaning think about the clients, think about somebody who wants, for example, for me, I'm thinking about somebody who wants a new branding design or a new packaging design. So if I would be a business who is looking for a new branding, I would totally look somewhere close by, you know, because then I can really communicate with them. Maybe I can even go and visit their studio and have a, you know, a, a meetup, a conversation, a personal conversation. And many, many um, local businesses, they want to be in touch with you as a person. 
So that I found really, really helpful to register your local business on Google. So whenever somebody is looking for, uh, let's say, graphic designer um, Denver, uh, I would I would pop up if they're if they're located somewhere close by to my uh, office or my whatever. You can also just uh, do your office, your house location because I have a home office, so why not? So you can register that, and I think. Uh, up there you kind of have to um, activate your account by receiving a postcard so you cannot take just any address you, you need to ad register a certain address where you either live or you know where you can receive mail so i thought that was really really helpful for me i had people calling me you know from uh from the local environment from the local businesses um and then one more thing is to connect to the local community because um Almost every city has uh, has their own local community, and if you get in touch with them, you kind of get um, get to see what's going on. Maybe even you can work with uh, agencies. What I've what I've done in the past, uh, where I've been also working with bigger brands like uh, Jameson Whiskey or Panda Express, is I offered my my services as a freelancer. And uh, so this agency would hire me for very specific tasks, and we would communicate. I will work for them remotely. Um, so that works as well. You can work with an agency because sometimes agencies have an over overload on work and they don't know what to do. They don't want to hire anybody new, but they always know that you're always kind of there and, you know, they can just send some work over to you. So that I found really helpful as well. And always be active in your community. Speak of yourself as a designer, because if you if people don't know that you're a designer, they will not hire you simply because they don't know your designer and um, they don't know, you, you know, who to, they were going to ask somebody else who told them they're a designer. So it's very important to uh, share and to think, you know, of yourself as a designer. I think that's the, probably the first step. Yeah, um, that's so true. Yeah, I, I feel like especially the community piece, what you're saying is so important, whether it's, you know, physically like being um, a regular at that coffee shop that is down the street from you. And, you know, even I feel like coffee shops are a great um, business that they're, they're usually pretty open to either, hey, can I hang my art on your walls and, and you know, do yeah. some trade off of like selling art and they, they can get a portion of it. And now, you know, your whole community is every time they walk in that coffee shop, they see your artwork or, um, hey, can I if they if they um, are a shop that brand or I'm sorry roasts their own coffee, you can be like, hey, can I brand um, your new like next roast of beans and um, do this packaging design and even I'll do it for free so that I can get my name out there and add to my portfolio. You know, if that if that is your first time um, uh, doing that and you and they don't have a budget or something and you're just wanting to build your portfolio and credibility, sometimes that that's good. Or if it's something that you do, then absolutely negotiate with them. Um, but yeah, it's community and like organic relationships is just, it's, it's ultimately going to be like the best, the best thing. Um, Cause business yeah. in general is such a human thing. Um, yeah. So you want to have those authentic connections where, um, when possible. Um, yeah. And also the online community has been such an awesome, um, an awesome place as well. Um, like you yeah, that's for sure. Yeah. I think, uh, also many clients look through Behance and now there is a new feature where you can save people as potential, you know, um, as somebody you want to hire potentially. So, um, or you can mark them as, as if they offered you a job. So those features, you know, they kind of add on to the better experience of, you know, hiring someone. And I, I totally agree with what you're saying, Lisa Marie. I, in my, in my community, in my environment, where, wherever I went, I kind of offered them a service. So let's say we always went to this distillery. It's a very, very local, tiny yeah. spot. And I was like, hey, why don't you make some menus? Let me make some menus for you. So I, I made those menus for, for him and we printed them out and uh, I gave him like a little um, stack of business cards and I was like, hey, so like if anybody asks you um, where you made the menus, just give him my card. And that worked as well, you know, just helping people out and um, and they will appreciate it and they will definitely give it back with recommendations. Yeah, so 100%. Really and even I really try to, for the most part, work 
with people, especially in the beginning when I'm, I'm reaching out to um, prospective clients, like I reach, I try to reach out to people that I like genuinely am a fan of already, you know? So like Mm -hmm. someone, someone like Patagonia, I'm like, I, you know, respect their company so much, everything that they stand for, like, it would be an honor to work for them. And that was, that was really how I approached it and was like, Hey, this is, um, like, you know, I, I'm, I've been a fan of your brand. I've been, I've been using your brand. I align with it in so many ways. Um, and here is my portfolio. If you guys are, it, you know, if you guys like my work as well, that would be awesome. You know, if not, that's okay. But um, sort of a thing. And, and really having that authentic, like, I already align with you and I'm a fan of, of that brand. And I think that just helps create such like a genuine relationship that, you know, like I'm, I'm already um, almost like a student of who they are. Like I already know everything about them or, you know, things like that. So like what you're saying with like your local brewery, like you already, you know, like you're a fan of um, their drinks and like their, so it's, I think just the more like almost like organic, authentic relationships you can get, just it, it just creates such stronger relationships and it it just feels so natural I think which is really cool and I feel like it's a curve that's like going very steep very fast so it start uh, it starts very low but then it kind of doubles and doubles and it's it's like an exponential growth because if you speak if you speak to one person this person speaks to 10 people and those 10 people speak to 10 people and those 10 people and so on so like the growth will go up so fast and I feel like I feel like word of mouth is the best thing ever that can bring in new clients. Totally. Yeah, I, I totally, I couldn't agree more. Um, so actually I wanted to show you guys something real quick that I'm doing. So I'm, um, I just finished my illustrations, just, um, kind of feel like they're in a pretty good spot to go ahead and now jump into illustrator. So, um, how you do this is, so at the top, right, there's, this button um, and we'll click publish and export and then pull it up here and then you want to click export as and go and make sure PDF is selected Um, and then we'll just we'll click export and then I just airdrop it right to my um, MacBook Pro and so now we'll I'll show you guys um, I'll pull it up um, right in Illustrator so that's just kind of a quick like how you can seamlessly work from um, one to the next. Yeah. I love airdrop. (laughs) It's the best thing ever. It's just like, that's why I'm sticking to to Apple products. Although I'm having kind of trouble with all the cables and connections, but, um, oh, I can't hear you. Oh, can you hear me? Oh, no, 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 I can't, yeah. Okay, cool. (laughs) Yeah, Tim is saying you can either airdrop or CC, or use CC files. Yeah, totally. Totally. So now I just have um, I just have a six by six um, kind of standard square um, document, and I'll I'll go ahead and place my new file in here. All right. Cool. Is that one? Yeah, and the cool thing on vector graphics is just you can scale it like endlessly. Totally. And that's the amazing part. How how big is uh, your your artboard that you've created now? So it's just a six by six inch. Um, mm-hmm. so, so I kind of pretty small. Yeah, it's pretty small. Um, and I like working in squares too. Um, just kind of I like to have that shape as at least like a starting point. Um. But yeah, with vectors, I mean, you can, there's no loss of resolution anywhere. So you can always scale it up if you need to. It really, um, really have some endless options. Awesome. Yeah, that's totally great. I think, I think for people who are not working in vector format um, yet and are going to switch, it's such an improvement. It makes life so much easier. Yeah. You can just adjust your designs. Totally. Oops. Cool. 
Cool. Reynald is asking, what's your advice for introverts who are shy in approaching potential clients? Yeah, that's, oh man, that is a hard one. I know I had such a hard time um, with putting myself out there for a little while. Um, although I wouldn't exactly say I'm an introvert, so that um, I, I feel for, for you. But um, I think it's something that helped me because I, I feel, I felt super uncomfortable with the idea of like, oh, I have to like sell myself. Like that just feels kind of like gross and I don't know. Um, but so something that really helped was really believing in like um, what you have to offer as like um, something that like, like I was saying, like you, you're already a fan of these people. Like it's genuine. It's not like you're selling yourself. Um, and then also you are, um, you really do believe that like what you can bring would, would offer them a lot of value. And so there is that just kind of like slowly growing that confidence in yourself and um, what you do have to offer. Um, I mean, it, it definitely takes time in practice. Um, and then another thing I would say, though, that really at least helped me get get some um, fire under my feet for when things are hard and you have to push yourself and constantly throw yourself out there is, um, you know, work, I mean, definitely work at another job while you're doing um, while you're starting your freelance work. But, um, for me, I, I just, I thrive when things are not structured. So, um, when I was working at, I had, I had, you know, like a, a good job, there was nothing wrong with it. I was working as a graphic designer. Um, and, um, even like I got promoted and different things, like everything was, it was good, but it just was not for me. And I hated working in a cubicle and, you know, doing the nine to five. And I, I just love when, I have more flexibility. So honestly, that also that experience was really, really great. I learned a lot of things, but knowing that like, okay, I can always fall back on that if this doesn't work out, you know, down the road, but I really don't want to go back to that. So that is actually a huge motivator for me to, you know, like, like even on the hard days as a freelancer, it's still, to me, it feels 10 times better than um, working in a cubicle or whatnot. So it's, to me, that, that helps me like, be like, okay, like I, I can get through, you know, pitching myself. I can get through going to this trade show and walking around and, you know, like having to talk to all these people and being mm -hmm. very nervous and, you know, so that there has to be some type of motivator, I think that, um, motivates you that is bigger than your fear, I would say. So really digging deep into that and, finding that thing that that feels worth it you know um I think everyone everyone is different in what motivates them yeah that's totally true I agree and I also had to build my confidence for a while for a while it, it took it took me a while to be able to be confident but I feel like one thing helps really really well is when you provide value to others with your artwork. I think that's something that I found um, very um, inspiring and you know, um, it's building you up when people give you the feedback that your work is valuable to them. So create something for somebody, you know, if even if you're creating illustrations, create an illustration that kind of will improve somebody's mood or, you know, um, help them to change their uh, negative mindset you know, something that, that provides them value. I feel like that's um, really helpful to build your own confidence. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there's, I think, yeah, that that train of thought that it's, you're offering value. It's not this like scheme. It's like, you really do believe in what you're doing yeah. and it's really, it's going to help them and trying to always come up with that like win-win situation where doesn't feel awkward because it do, it's not it's it doesn't feel you know ingenuine because it's not it feels like you're really trying to team up with someone and um yeah it just makes a world of a difference i would say yeah totally i was thriving the most when i was doing something for the people so i'm i'm just like i'm i'm this mom character you know <laughs> <laughs> I, that's why I really enjoy um, educational stuff. That's awesome. Amazing. It's so much fun. 
I'm really happy, even though sometimes I'm really, you know, I'm going to sleep and I'm really tired. But it's this, it's not a negative tiredness. It's this, um, you know, fulfilled and um, you feel very whole. And let's say, I don't know, you feel very inspired to do more. So next day I will wake up way earlier than I would have and, you know, do more. And that motivates me a lot. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I, I love, love those typefaces. Thank right. you. Yeah, so that's, I mean, this is another thing that um, is really fun about having a library. And I mean, I think I was kind of touching on, like, I like to collect things. I collect patches. I collect color palettes. I also collect fonts. <laughs> um, so you can actually, something that's cool in um, Adobe Illustrator is, um, so we obviously have, like, tons and tons of fonts available. But then there's this little star over here. So you can, mm -hmm. as you are working, you can actually... Um, star your favorites so um mm -hmm. so now i have this quick list of well it's still probably about a hundred fonts but it's you know less than thousands of fonts that i can um quickly refer to and um yeah so that that's kind of one of the one of my favorite like workflow um mm -hmm. tricks i guess that's awesome and where do you get your phones most of the time yeah so I mean, a whole mix of things. So, I mean, obviously there is Adobe Type Kit, which you have access with your Creative Cloud subscription to like thousands of fonts. There's so many great ones. And then there's also um, a ton of different fonts um, all over the internet. Um, a lot of um, designers will, will create these custom fonts and um, mm -hmm. sell them for, um, you know, there's, there's all different types of packages. But one of my favorite ones is actually um, uh, Kern Club, which mm -hmm. they, um, they've, they've definitely been growing pretty big on Instagram. I don't know um, if you guys are familiar with Kern Club, um, but I actually did some work with them and created um, my own font for them as well. But they, they offer both free and um, paid for fonts, but their fonts are only up to $10, which is crazy. It's super- Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, but um, they have so many great ones. So honestly, a lot of my favorites are from Kern Club. So here, I'll just show mm -hmm. you um, all of these that say KC, that stands for Kern Club. So like Distressed Unrest. Cool. Punk Wagon. Yeah, this is my <laughs> my font it was actually, so it's all like my handwriting. Yeah. Um, so this is totally free. Um, it's called KC Lisa Hand. Um, <laughs> so you, you can get That's my handwriting awesome. as a font. <laughs> um, but yeah, so they just have all these super fun, fun That's fonts. cool. I definitely have to check it out. Yeah, it's a great resource. But yeah, and then there's other, um, oh man, there's so many other markets um, I'm blanking on right now where I've, what websites I've bought through. But I mean, like Hoodspa, like um they have their own font i bought that um the palm canyon drive which is super beautiful yeah yeah so just just uh all over the internet there's there's lots of cool fonts to um what is this one that yeah. you picked the last this is belly beans oh nice it's kind of like that a... one that one is really nice it works so yeah. well with your illustrations i feel yeah totally it's definitely like that um Kind of like groovy 60s, 70s. Yeah, yeah, totally groovy. Yeah, that's a good word for it. That's <laughs> totally. for sure. Yeah. Yeah, so now I'm going to just kind of play with um, adding these little typographic badges. So I'm trying to think of what color. I do, I'm trying to, I think I want to do a blue background for mm -hmm. this piece. Okay. Let's see. We'll Guys in the chat, let us know uh, where you're getting your typefaces from. What are your favorite sites? What are your favorite typefaces? Would be awesome to know. I think it's always great, you know, if we can share these resources with each other. Absolutely. That is amazing. I see you have a, like a little library for your colors, right? Yeah. So this is actually um, this is the exact same library from my um um uh ipad library i'm sorry <laughs> my mind just blanked um yeah. and so you can actually just um 
How do you sorry, put the leave color? Leave oh, sorry, sorry. Oh, no, no, you're good. <laughs> what were you going to say? I was just asking, I was just wondering, how do you put the colors inside? So maybe we can, um, we can show um, to the people who are watching how you kind of create this library. Yeah, totally. So basically, um, let me just go. So uh, you want to go up to library. So if you don't have it ready available, this is just how my workspace is set up. You can go down to library um, from the window and click that and it'll open up this little um, piece over to the side. And what you want to do then is, um, let's see, I'll create. Um, I think you just have to create a, new a little. Oh, yeah, you can do that too. Yeah. Yeah, so I'll create a new library just to show you. Um, I'll say Adobe Live is what I'll call it. And now um, basically you wanna just take your eyedropper tool and, um, or at least this is how I work, but you can select a color. So you can mm -hmm. see how this is selected. And yeah. now that I want, if I wanna add that red to my library, I click the plus button, mm -hmm. fill color, and there it is. And then oh, I can go nice. again, do the pink awesome. plus, there it is. So awesome. now I can always quickly reference this library, but so I have my blue and pink one, earth tone library. Um, oh, nice. I've done That's this awesome. with so many different. Um, yeah. And you can also put colors. other elements to the colors. You can even put shapes, you can put typefaces, any types of graphics you can drop into one library. So you can not only make a color library, but you can make a whole branding library. That's what I'm, for example, doing. I'm dropping all the graphic elements, like the logo, the logo in different variations. And then, for example, if I open a different application, I can access those libraries and just pull it out from there right away. Yeah, it's so awesome. And I love that it's it's linked to since it's in your library. Yeah. Um, so whether you are working in Fresco, Illustrator, Photoshop, you name it, um, it's always going to be there. So that is extremely helpful and just kind of helps you just keep working quick. Um, and just, yeah, it's great. <laughs> awesome. Corey Sakamoto is saying, I'm really enjoying your illustration, Lisa. Thank you, appreciate yeah. it. And Tim, thanks for sharing the link. Of course, you can also go to fonts.adobe.com. There you, you will find all the typefaces that you can just activate and they're all free. You can activate them and then they are uh, accessible in your fonts, in your um, all of your Adobe applications. So that's also fun to play with. And then there is also color.adobe.com where you can uh, find different color palettes. You can get inspirations. You can extract colors or even gradients from different artwork. So that's also fun to play with. And they have this new game where you can, um, where you have to remember the different colors. Um, yeah, and you have to kind of click them. Just check it out. It's on color.adobe.com. Nice, that sounds awesome. Yeah, I do that when I'm, you know, when I need a little break. <laughs> totally. That's good. Yeah. Hannah Swanson, good to see you. Um, Hannah is saying King Club is also good for typefaces. Awesome. And yeah, Current Club, Sarah is saying thanks for mentioning it. Very cool fonts. And PM is saying Creative Market and sometimes on graphic magazine sites are some free fonts. Yeah, Creative cool. Market's great. Um, and like retro supply, that's another one. Um, man, why am I forgetting? I don't know. If I if I remember, I'll I'll have to send it over to you. There's one other that I'm totally forgetting on forgetting about. But retro supply is also a super yeah. great resource. I love the way you made the background and unplug. How did you do that? Yeah. So I um, I'll do it again actually with with this guy over here. Mm -hmm. um, awesome. So basically, I'm just um, oops, actually keep that so I am I have my my type right here and then I've duplicated it and basically I will just give it a stroke and mm -hmm. make the stroke larger mm -hmm. and then put it place it right on top and then send it yeah. to the back oh nice that is yeah. an awesome tip so easy that's just yeah super easy so um that's like a fun way to kind of quickly make some bubble letters um yeah looks like there's a little bit of a weird thing going on down here oh yeah let me fix that huh. Let's see. maybe the shape is not closed or something something is there really. totally 
Hmm. Maybe if you click on the D and right click and join. Um, oh. oh. May if you right click and join. If that will help. Hmm. No, that help. doesn't help. But sometimes the glitch effect. Yeah, I mean, you can always <laughs> do a nice. Yeah, that like, will work too. Yes. It's like a... Yeah, something is wrong with that letter. Yeah. Cool, That's but good. I mean, whatever works, right? <laughs> totally. I'll group it together. Cool. PM is saying, oh, that game is so great. I miss that thing. So <laughs> yeah, it's so much fun. We're talking about color.adobe.com, the game, oh, the nice. color game. <laughs> Galina is saying, if you're visiting a website and you like a specific font, you can right click on the page to get the inspector and view the fonts used on the website in the HTML document. Yeah, I believe you can do that. I think it's, I think it's, it's great. But if I look at an HTML document, my mind starts being completely blank. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I just can't. I was, I was trying to um, learn how to code and my mind is just like my head, my brain is overloaded when I see so much text and numbers. Totally. Yeah. I'm, I'm always extremely impressed with people that can code. <laughs> Same here. I, yeah. I don't have that patience. Yeah. It seems really complicated. I guess when you kind of are already into it and you are doing it for several years, you you don't even think about it anymore. It's just a natural. Yeah, like learning a new language or something. Yeah, exactly. You don't even have to think, you know, what it says. You just read it right away and then you just know what it means. Yeah, which you can, you mentioned you speak several languages. Is that? Yeah. Right? That's so awesome. Yeah, yeah I wish I... That's definitely a goal is to, I would love to be a lot more fluent in different languages. I think it's such a good skill. I think it always helps if you stay in the country for a long time, hmm. then you kind of pick it up so easily. Yeah. Especially if you already had it in school or, you know, started learning in advance. Absolutely. What, what all um, different languages can you speak? Um, so I was born in the Ukraine mm -hmm. and, um, well, Ukrainian is not really a language I use a lot. Mostly in my, with my family, we speak Russian. Uh, oh. But there is the Ukrainian language, and in Ukraine, it's actually being used a lot. So, um, and it's different from Russian. It looks similar, but if a Russian goes to Ukraine, <laughs> they never understand what the Ukrainians are, Ukrainians are saying. Oh, that's funny. Mm, so, so, yeah, Russian, Ukrainian. And then when I was nine years old, we moved to Germany. So I learned German. Uh, it was a great age, by the way, to, to start a new language because I went to school and I kind of had to pick it up quickly because I needed to, uh, you know, learn what we were learning in school. And yeah. in the beginning, it was pretty hard, although I was taking lessons before we left Ukraine. Uh, but it was really hard in the beginning. I did not understand anything, but I picked it up in about a year. And I was able to, you know, do school and, and everything. So in Germany, I spent about 18 years. And then about three years ago, I came here. That's awesome. It's funny. I actually, when I was younger, um, I had a friend that was from the Ukraine. And I still remember only the swear words. <laughs> oh, yeah. Of, of, uh, from like literally elementary school, you know, because she, yeah. she would teach me them. And somehow yeah. I still remember them. But that's that's the first thing you learn in, in any language it has to be right <laughs> and what i thought was really cool also is that in school um i learned spanish mm -hmm. me too and now and now my husband is colombian <laughs> oh that's awesome <laughs> so yeah i i actually can use that language a lot right now especially when we are in, in his family's house so yeah yes definitely Keith is saying, I speak English, Irish, Canadian, and Scottish. Yeah. That, <laughs> I, I believe also even accents are something, you know, you have to learn. So it is kind of a type of different language. You can, you can totally say that. But yeah, I see, I see where you're going with this, Keith. <laughs> <laughs> 
but yeah, Scottish, uh, Irish, the original language is completely different, right? Oh no, um, like Celtic, Celtic, or... yeah, they speak Celtic, or do, do they really speak it? I'm not sure. It's so bad. My mom is actually 100% Irish, but I have, I don't know much about it. So I'm not, I'm not sure. Keith, let us know if Celtic is something that um, Irish speak. Tim is saying, I speak German and English, usually not at the same time. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It's funny. Sometimes I forget the words when I'm talking to my mom and she's talking to me in Russian. So I have this mix of Russian, English, and German that I want to talk to her. Oh, man. (laughs) (laughs) So sometimes I really have to catch myself standing there and and translating the word because I lost it in Russian or German. Yeah, that sounds like a lot going on (laughs) for just one conversation. That's impressive, though. Super impressive. Yeah. Uh, Ivana is saying it's Gaelic. Mm, yes, that sounds... Gaelic like for Scotland. Sounds right. I love to learn these things, you know, these uh, little differences between um, between the different countries. I think it's it's amazing to, you know, to know all these, um, to all these things, to know Absolutely. all these things. Alexander is saying hi. Hi, Alexander. Hello. Privet. Privet. That's how you say hi in Russian. Privet. 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 Very cool. Cool. Let us know, guys, in the chat, what languages do you speak? Keith is saying all their street signs are written in Gaelic and English. Hmm. Very interesting. Yeah, I think Gaelic is like the older language, right? The original language yes. from, from Ireland. <laughs> Alexander saying Ukraine is here. Yay, Ukraine in the house. <laughs> I love how um, just diverse the Adobe community is and that we can be talking to people from all over the world. It's it's just so amazing. Yeah, totally. I agree. And, you know, um, language doesn't have to be perfect as long as we kind of understand each other. That's the most important part. And have you found yourself uh, sometimes speaking to someone whose language you completely, which language, whose language you don't know at all, and then trying to like um, understand each other and somehow um, you are able to communicate? Have you found yourself in, in, in that situation? I, I do feel like I have a couple different times. Um, I actually um, remember there was a couple years, well, gosh, actually it was probably almost like eight years ago now or something that I um, was in Brooklyn um, teaching people that had just immigrated um, from China how to speak English. And um I actually don't speak Chinese. Um, I I think I knew maybe a couple of words, but I was helping them learn English, which was, you know, just this little like, oh my gosh, you know, neither of us can really speak each other's languages, but we we ended up, you know, working together for a a couple weeks and um, there was like, we were able to communicate like by the end of the um, week. And so it's just like amazing how there, there's so many things that, um, just don't change no matter what um, culture or language you're in like you there's just so many like similarities about just what it is to be human that you can yeah you really can communicate and which I think is really beautiful I totally agree I also had an experience in China so we had this exchange project from when I was studying in Germany we went to a Chinese university in Hefei, which is by Shanghai, cool. and uh, we were working with Chinese students on a on the design project. So that was very interesting because I uh, so they divided every exchange to every German exchange student to a whole group of Chinese. So I was the only one who was from Germany. Everybody else in my group was Chinese, and only one person spoke just a little bit of English. Everybody else was just oh, no. Chinese. So that was so interesting because um, 
for some reason, we were able to communicate what we want from each other in terms of design, you know, visuals also communicate a lot. And we can just, you know, we, we were able to divide our work and combine our work into a whole workflow in the end. So that's, I thought that was such an amazing experience. And it went over, um, I believe like two months. So it was so intense to not understand someone and still wow. being able to communicate. That is so cool. And especially like, I love that you touched on that. It was like for the design community, because I do feel like the visual language, like art, art design is a visual language and how that yes. really does transcend like any or not. I mean, not everything transcends, but mo uh, there's a lot of things that do transcend like culture and time and different things like that. And so I love how design unifies us in that language yeah for sure i totally agree jean philippe was saying i speak only italian and english only that's already two languages that's yeah, good that is good i feel like if you're um you know born in a country where you usually speak english you don't have uh, much motivation you know to um learn uh to learn a new language because you kind of can come along so easily just with english I mean, the United States um, are so big, so you can travel from one end to the other. Everybody still speaks English, but it's a completely new uh, climate, completely new environment. And even the culture varies, you know, from place to place. And in Europe, I feel like you're more um, inclined to learning other languages from the, at least from the neighbor countries. Yeah, it's so true. I feel like, well, at least in school, I mean, which I'm glad we um, had to definitely learn a different language, um, which I learned Spanish and I was so thankful for that. Um, I actually used it a lot at um, one of my jobs. Um, but yeah, it's definitely traveling more internationally now. Um, I know my husband and I were saying like, we really want to learn more languages because even though it does feel like a lot of people like have the ability to speak English, even as like a second language, maybe in a different country, it feels like, well, we should also be learning <laughs> how to speak the other languages. Like, I don't want to just like, you know, rely on hoping that people speak English. So, and I think so many other languages are so beautiful too. So it would mm -hmm. be it's definitely a very big goal of mine to, to learn yeah. a couple more languages. Yeah, PM is saying, yeah, as a child, we were camping and I communicated with Italians and played games without speaking the same language. Yeah, same here. I totally agree. We were traveling and then you are always surrounded by, um, you know, by people who are speaking a completely different language. And it's it's cool. I love it. And especially kids, I feel like they don't need to communicate that much. They're just, you know, fighting over toys. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> You don't need much language for that. <laughs> Totally. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, so yeah, I feel like as kids, it's way easier to kind of pick something up and to just be able to communicate whatever way it is. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like that is such like a, a beautiful, like pure thing about kids that, you know, we all just, they, they just want to play and <laughs> and they'll, they'll figure yeah. it out. Cool. Well, I, I'm trying to think of what else to add. So I have my Typographic badges. Ooh, actually, I meant to add type to this girl. Let me do that. Awesome. Tim just posted a link. And guys, um, we want to get your feedback on uh, Adobe Live and we want to get some kind of, you know, uh, ideas of what you guys are looking forward to seeing and if you're enjoying what we're already kind of having um, in, um, in this content. So just make sure to fill out the a survey if you have some time. That would be great. That would be very helpful to improve your own experience here on Adobe Live. Cool. Jan Philippe was saying, good work, Lisa. Yeah, I totally agree. Uh -huh, and there was also you. there was also a question before, what are you going to do with these stickers afterwards? Are you going to put them, print them on sticker paper or uh, what's what's the plan? Yeah, so I don't um as of right now have much of a plan. And sadly, a lot of my work, I guess not sadly, um, but a lot of a lot of my work like this, where it's more so just like practicing my skills and honing in. Um, different pieces they'll probably just live online um, but then I definitely I like to um, work with um, different companies to create like merchandise that would be available um, but I, I am 
kind of considering um, maybe doing some of my own like limited merchandise if if that's something that um, you guys would be interested in um, that might be cool so I I know I just gave you like three different answers <laughs> but um, I'm always open to kind of hearing what people um, are interested in me yeah. doing with it totally and we have only 10 minutes until your design feedback for your Photoshop challenge. Mm -hmm. So make sure to submit it in the challenge hashtag if you haven't yet. And we're going to be reviewing that. So excited. Me too. That's awesome. Yay. PM is asking, is it the same like yesterday or are the new questions in the, um, in the survey? It's the same survey. So only fill it out if you haven't yet. Cool. Awesome. For all of you guys who just joined Adobe Life and hasn't been here before, let us know in the chat. Just write newbie. I want to know if you <laughs> guys are new here. That would be awesome. Yeah, it's coming along really nicely. This typeface, I feel like, works so well with these colors, you know. Thank you. Yeah, this is, oh my gosh, this is actually one of my all-time favorite typefaces. This is another um, typeface family that I just love. It's the HWT. So this is, mm -hmm. you can find on um, the Adobe Type Kit. So that's available um, with the Creative Cloud subscription. Um, but this, the HWT Arabesque is like just such a cool, like wavy, yeah totally love it yeah it's awesome definitely use it a lot alexander is saying brand newbie yay welcome yay alexander if you like you can participate in the daily creative challenge in photoshop if you um go above the chat when there is a little challenge tab if you click that you can participate in the daily creative challenge and that's also our our discord chat where you can kind of you know Get in touch with the com design community and get feedback, post your work. Jacob is saying newbie kind of have only been here for two weeks. Welcome, Jacob. I think if you want to learn about uh, design, you're in totally in the totally right place. And feel free to ask questions. We're always happy to, you know, yes. to help out. Totally. Yeah. Ask away. Oh, Galina is suggesting, Lisa, if I were you, I totally use some of these designs uh, in sock patterns and make some funny, some funky socks. Oh, that would be cool. Yeah, oh. yeah, socks would be awesome with this, with these uh, badges. Totally. Yeah, something that I love about these badges, like I was saying earlier, like you can, it feels like there is an endless amount of ways that you can use them because they're so versatile. So it's really just like a fun project to play with um mm -hmm. yeah yeah and Ivana is also saying that's actually a really great idea totally agree Jan Philippe was asking when is the ne next live with with me so I'm going to be doing um the daily creative challenge just starting uh, May 25th so feel free to join guys it's going to be daily creative challenges and illustrator for two weeks I'm going to be the host that's awesome Definitely join. Yeah. All right, so I think I might pop over into Photoshop now if we, or we, we probably have just a couple more minutes. Yeah, we have five minutes, but you can already uh, move over to Photoshop, that's fine. We can just continue after the Daily Creative Challenge reviews. That's true, okay. Totally fine. <laughs> Galina is saying, I love socks. Can you tell? <laughs> She's saying, I made some sock patterns from designs I had and entered um, Socky Tommy's competitions. Ooh, ah, Socky cool. Toms. Never heard about that. Have you heard about those competitions? I haven't, no, but um, hmm. I am also a big fan of socks. <laughs> Nice. Michelle is asking, how did you two get connected to, to do this live? We have our wizard who is doing all that. So it's all magic. Yes. <laughs> we have Talk some magic tricks. Yeah. 
Paco has some magic tricks. In <laughs> totally. Anthony's asking, that's a good question, actually. What do clients look for in a portfolio? I think we spoke about uh, this shorter earlier today, short earlier today. Um, so what do you think? Um, should we just, just, I would say just, you, you answer this question. <laughs> yeah, totally. Well, first of all, I think it totally depends on what you are looking for. So um, I like to really um, target who my client is, who my audience is. So um, I'll just speak on like for me personally, it's going to typically be someone that is um, looking for either merchandise. Um, so they're looking for graphic t-shirts, hats, bandanas, you know, anything that you can put on merch, or it's going to be um, more of like the logo and branding design work, which is something that I've been getting a lot more into in the, over the last year and a half. Um, so for me, I'm, I'm looking for one of those two things. So that is what my whole entire portfolio really should be. Um, so I would say, ask yourself, what kind of work do you want to do? And then make sure that is, that is what your work is. So if you're looking to do um, designs for, um, yeah, let's say branding or packaging like Julia does, um, like you are going to want to have a portfolio that is filled with images of how your designs work on um, a packaging design or on packaging um, projects. And um, yeah, so really whatever it is that you are looking to gain clients for is exactly what the bulk of your work should be. Um, totally. I totally agree. And also, um, I feel like clients are looking for something original that mm -hmm. sticks out. So, um, and, and some designers even specialize in certain things. Like, uh, like, let's say some designers specialize in making very happy brands, very colorful uh, and bold brands. Some uh, designers are more, um, you know, um, how do you call that more in the elegant uh, design more in the elegant way so those probably would more be more suitable designers for cosmetic brands or you know luxury brands there's different types of designers and if you can find your style that that would be awesome and if you can kind of focus on your style um throughout the project so you can see like you're more of the happy designer or you more of the you know um um whatever, female products designer, or you more of a beverage and food, um, you know, designer. So I feel like everybody kind of finds their little niche and concentrates on it. And that works pretty well in my experience. Yeah, absolutely. And that's where even kind of what I was saying um, beforehand was just really um, try to work with different people that um, feel... Um, like it feels true to you. So it's like if like for me, for example, I do like the, the more like quirky, fun, um, uh, like illustrative pieces. And so that's definitely the type of um, clients that I should work with. So I'm not going to necessarily work with people that are very like buttoned up and um, yeah. geometrical, but it's going to be more of like the fun um, kind of quirky type of personality. So you want to. Yeah yeah you kind of want to match that energy um to yeah totally who, who you are so i agree and i feel like when clients look for designers they look exactly for that so it matches you know their mood their brand's uh, style so yeah that's yeah. definitely a great tip and galina is asking you julia have you worked on packaging design in ukraine if yes what is the design world like over there um i cannot tell you because i have not worked on packaging designs in the ukraine i left the ukraine when i was nine years old and um i have not you know worked there at all so and i've never worked with uh ukrainian clients neither can't tell you unfortunately but there's probably great agencies i think i have seen some great agencies in kiev um, that do amazing uh, packaging design. Yeah, we only have about 30 seconds left until the design reviews. So excited about that. Yay. Yeah, so I just dropped this into Photoshop so I can, mm -hmm. I'll tweak it after our reviews. Um, yeah, this is, this is the last step where I add some texture. <laughs> Sounds good. So you just, um, use the file that you just edited in 
Illustrator, right? Yeah, yeah. So I saved it as um, just a PNG and then um, went ahead and opened up um, Photoshop. And then I have this fun like butcher's paper effect that, that mm -hmm. adds some um, really nice texture to it. So um, yeah, awesome. I will. I'll show you guys that after. Awesome. Yeah, we'll jump into the daily creative challenge reviews, guys. So exciting. Yay, let's do it. All right. Thanks, everyone, for submitting your daily creative challenges. This is so amazing. All right. So, guys, um, you can even uh, participate at this whenever you want, even after this, uh, after these streams. So this page is always available for you. It's not only for the daily creative challenges. You can also just come in and, you know, check it out, look at other people's work, give some feedback, um, you know, post your own work. Um, there is design other where you can, you know, share other things, um, portfolio reviews and so on. So let's go on to the uh, current challenge. This is where you guys posted your today's daily creative challenge. And it was all about glitch effects. So let's take a closer look at this Ooh. work from from Tan 2019. Ooh, this is Very fun. Cool. Even created a little um, GIF animation here. This is awesome. This is, by the way, guys, it's you can create this in Photoshop and it's really not that difficult to do. Um, you, I think you should watch uh, to Paul Trani's intro to this challenge. He probably talks about about this as well. This looks really awesome. What do you think, Lisa Marie? Yeah, I love that it's a still life too. I know we were talking about still lives yesterday, so that, that definitely brings back some memories for me. Yeah. Um, yeah, really, really nice illustration. And I love the glitch effect. I feel like just adding a little bit of motion and animation, it really does just elevate your drawing and makes it more interesting. So great job. Yeah, awesome job. Well done, Tan. Cool. And here is the, the still version without the animation. Looks great, too. Very cool. Amazing. I love the brushes that you used here. Looks great. All right, let's jump to the next one from Vandam Designer. Heavenly glitch. <laughs> oh, it adds so much, um, you know, so much movement to the to the whole image. Totally. Right? Yeah. It's even like when you're like looking at the bird and then you kind of look down a little bit right where the yeah. um, clouds touch. It's it's almost like this like trippy effect where it feels like yeah. it's moving. Very cool. And only 10 years old. That's very impressive. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Great job on them. Keep it up. Great job. I have seen so many, uh, so many kids on here. This it's so mind blowing how yeah. uh, you know they start in su such an early age to um, create things like that, and that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. that really is amazing. I know. I didn't. I think the first time I um, tried any Adobe products was I was at least eighteen or nineteen. So yeah, keep it up. You're already ahead of me. <laughs> yeah, totally. And this one is also really nice. It looks like um, the, you have overlays of two photos with separated channels. It looks amazing. I really like this effect. It, it kind of makes it look more exciting. I like this contrast of this yellow and blue also. It's, it came out great. What do you think? Yeah, the colors are really nice. Again, like what you were saying, I really like the, how the, the contrasting colors kind of just help um, just make it look really interesting and add... Um, yeah, add that different um, dimension to it as well as the overlay. It's, that's really interesting. I like that. Awesome. Yeah, great job, Sandra. All right, this one is by Alaroy Glitch Challenge. Ooh, that Ooh, looks so cool. dark and mysterious. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love that. There's it's a nod to um, just old oil paintings as well. That that is very like moody and mysterious. Yeah, totally. I love how you kind of had different approaches in the top part and in the bottom part. Here, I feel like you just separated the, um, you know, the different um, channels. And here at the top, you even use like this, um, uh, this square, these square shapes to kind of um, cut it apart and you know pull it apart. So I think it came out really amazing. I really love this part around here. Um, I don't know. I feel like these squares would not work anywhere else except uh, on the top part. So it looks really, really amazing. You made great design decisions here. <laughs> totally. 
Yeah, it, I agree. I think that looks really, really cool. I'd almost love to see it even like more like cropped in so that you can, it really highlights all the glitches that you've done. Um, mm -hmm. so yeah. And even uh, again, love the, the purple and green contrasting colors. Um, I think, yeah, that, that gives it that like eerie energy to it, which is super yeah. cool. So great job. Great job. This one is by Elroy. Cool. And the next one is from um, Jack Circuit. Ooh. Oh, this could almost be like a um, like an album cover. I was just about to say that. Yeah, it totally feels like an album cover. Super yeah. cool. Yeah, it yeah. came out really great. I love it. I love that, you know, the photo is separated on just the right spots, you know? Uh, the eyes are still there. They're not separated too much. So that's amazing. Yeah, and it almost looks like, I can't tell if that's like a planet overlay or something on her neck or what, but it's got this cool like space vibe. Like yeah, it almost totally. feels like even the black background like kind of looks like space with little stars, but it's not exactly it. So it gives us kind of like, um, yeah. Galactic. The, galactic, there's, yeah, that's a good <laughs> word. <laughs> galactic album cover. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I love it. And I love the texture here in the back. Also, you, I think you applied two different um, textures. One is more this um, line, lined uh, texture. And then the other one is this noise here that you added those little, little spots that almost look like stars. So that works perfectly together. Yeah, super cool. Awesome. Thumbs up. Yay. Great job by Jack. And then we have another artwork from Elroy. Ooh. That looks cool too. Very mysterious. Yes. I'm trying to read what it says. Same here. <laughs> Work and came hit hits and score. Okay. It's probably some motivation on motivational um, <laughs> um speech. text speech. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, I think that's super interesting. It makes me think of um who is it? The I don't know if you guys are familiar with the Stefan Sagmeister. Um, oh, Stefan Sagmeister. Yeah, yes. it reminded me of him as well. He yes. actually has an artwork where they write something on the where they wrote something on the face, right? Yeah, and also I think all over his body too, which it oh, was yeah, yeah. a little bit like intense, um, but very very interesting. So it kind of it makes me think of that, which is cool. Um, yeah, I would love to almost maybe. Um, have some of the text potentially be a little bit more visible just because we are trying to read it um because it's so interesting it's like oh what is this person trying to say yeah. like because it, it grab it pulls you in and grabs that attention so well totally so really really good job um yeah. yeah and guys you have to check out um zach meister and walsh yes i'm typing with a different keyboard <laughs> <laughs> yeah they they're out of New York and honestly, um, especially Jessica Walsh was like one of my favorite um, oh, yeah. designers such, in the beginning. Such an inspiration. Inspiration. Yeah, totally. And I think their website was nice. Uh, I, I believe they separated now, but um, before what they used to have is they had a co whole camera view here of their of their studio. So you can actually see their studio in life, in real life. Yeah. In life. How do you call that? In real time. That's how you call it. Yeah. And they have like some a, really amazing work. Yeah. Yeah. Very oh, experimental. And oh, I was yeah. just saying, yeah, they had like, it was kind of like a constant like live stream cam where um, yeah. you could literally watch their team working, which was so creative and fun. Um, I feel like they're always pushing the boundaries. So very, very inspirational. Yeah, totally. Um, I believe there's some more projects, but um, I think I believe they separated now and Jessica Walsh has her own studio now. So she probably also took a bunch of work onto her website um so yeah definitely worth checking out they have some really great work check out uh, jessica wall she also has something that's called ladies wine and design it's a uh, an organization that's bas uh, basically creating this ladies um community of designers so um yeah they can um, basically they um are connecting the ladies and helping each other out and having events in almost every city yeah. worth checking out all right cool. Now let's get back to the challenges. Ooh, <laughs> I have no special talent. I'm only passionately curious. Yeah, that's a great quote. That. So motivating or inspiring. Yeah. yeah. 
Oh, I like I like how the glitches are across his eyes. Um, yeah. Very cool. Yeah, very great job. I like how Curious is also turned around. Mm -hmm. This um, typeface is also, um, it reads very well. And um, the way you um, kind of aligned it on the left side works super well. And you, of course, you read from top to bottom. It's, um, it came out really good. I like it. Yeah, very nice. So it almost felt like a book yeah. cover or something. The way yeah, that... totally, right? Yeah. yeah. Super cool. Or it could be a poster as well. Mm -hmm. This one was by Cargo. And the next one is by uh, Suraj Bag. Ooh. Cool. Wow. Sanjay that... Dutt. Mm -hmm. Oh, I was going to say, I wonder if, is that a drawing that they did of the um, character? I'm not sure if it's a drawing. Sanjay, let us know if you're in a chat and if you're watching. Yes, because that is very impressive. If, if yeah, it's your really, drawing. it looks really nice. It might be some graphic um, from a movie poster or something. I'm not sure. Yeah. Oh, I think that it's from moviegallery.net. <laughs> uh, I think yes. it's like a stock photo. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay. But um, great job. Nonetheless, you made a really nice uh, graphic out of this. I see there is also three dimensional objects, kind of like um, cubes that are, you know, in three dimensional space. So yeah. that looks really cool. And love, love the color scheme again. Again, the contrasting colors, I'm always, that always pops out yeah. like right away for me. Um, that's really fun. It actually totally. almost gives me like a Ninja Turtles vibe with the, the purple yeah. and green. And then he, he looks almost like, um, you know, a combat person or a ninja. Yeah. So it's kind of like a fun throwback feel. Totally. Awesome. Great job, Suraj. And this one is by Jagruti. Ooh. This is interesting. This is really interesting. It almost looks like the face is dividing into pixels and kind of dissolving. Yes. Like the um, Marvel movies. Isn't that what oh, keeps yeah, happening right. at the end? They div they're dissolving. Um, yeah. That, yeah, that's really cool. Love the, the texture. And what does that quote yeah. say at the bottom? The mind wants... Uh, the, the mind once stretched by a new idea never returns to its, to its original dimensions. Hmm. Very cool. It's a great quote. I would just avoid, you know, typing white on top of white here. Maybe you, you could have put the quote here on the left side and divided it in two or three lines. That will work. Um, just, um, just make sure that you have enough contrast so the text is still legible. Here it's pretty hard to read. But great job! That one totally. is by Jagruti, and there is another one by Jagruti. The mind, uh, oh, it's the same quote. But I really like this eff effect also. It almost looks like it's like scratch with a, with a needle or if it's like a, a print that, like an imperfect print. Absolutely. Yeah, really, cool. really cool texture. Yeah, and cool colors also. I like this deep uh, dark red and this contrasty um, ocean blue here in the front looks amazing yeah really nice works super well all right this one is by sig oh Ooh. this is also interesting i feel like these two effects are different this one is more it looks more like it's um moving and here it's it's more like it's divided into two you know so it's it's i don't know i'm not sure how to call that but, <laughs> but yeah. it looks very interesting I really yeah like Totally, like the one on the left hand side, like the the um, artwork behind the bird itself almost looks more like brush stroke. So it, it feels yeah, more right? of like a movement. Um, yeah. Yeah, that is, that is really interesting. And then that text too is very interesting. That's another thing I'm like, oh, I wonder what that says. Um, yeah. But very cool. Yeah, I wonder if, um, yeah, I would maybe add more of that. Um, even like the, the glitch effect or movement to like the rock or something. So it feels like the whole foreground is in that um, same effect um, that might might help everything kind of uh, flow together a little bit more. But yeah, so you yeah. mean also this rock, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's very interesting though. I love how, um, how you really played with so many different things and it looks like you went in and did a lot of different um, layers in this, which is really cool. So great work. 
Yeah, awesome. Well done, Jagruti. Okay, and we're going into our last one. So we can jump back into Illustrator again and kind of finalize things and see how we can apply texture. Oh, Ooh, this is so cute. So cute. Wow, Lee Designer is eight years old. Guys, this is amazing. Thanks for sharing your age, by the way. This is really impressive. I, I'm always, I always wanted to know like what are the age groups that, you know, submitting are submitting the artwork. And it's always really interesting to know. So feel free to add it whenever you have, uh, you know, your artwork posted. So we kind of know, um, what age group you, you guys are because it's really interesting to see you know kids participate here it's it's really great i'm so proud i know <laughs> absolutely i'm like i'm shocked i don't even know if i knew how to turn a computer on when i was eight yeah, right? <laughs> same um, here i was playing with sticks and rocks <laughs> outside i didn't even know what a computer is my, i remember i had one experience when my mom showed me a window her first windows 95 or something yeah i was five years old and i thought it's going to uh i thought it was going to explode if there's something <laughs> wrong or i was so scared of it i really oh, literally really? thought that if i click a wrong button it's going to you know explode on me or break. yeah <laughs> totally so great job lee keep it up and that is yeah. so so cool that you are already you know mastering some of your techniques um on the computer I really yeah. love, obviously, the cat is so cute. Um, so and cute, yeah. I love the glitch effect, again, with the green and purple and the overlays. I think this is this is really fun. It's a really dynamic piece, so great job. Yeah. Mika is also saying sticks and stones, Dito. <laughs> yeah. Like my age group and, you know, the 90s kids, we're, we were all playing with sticks and rocks and climbing trees. <laughs> yeah, I was just about to say climbing trees. Yeah, Play, yeah. playing soccer outside. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And we were also using a lot of chalk, you know, drawing on, on the yeah. ground and uh, playing games. But thanks everyone for submitting your daily creative challenges. We're going to jump back quickly into Illustrator. So this was so amazing. Thank you so much again. And uh, feel free to submit even now, whatever, whatever you feel like it. Feel free to submit the yesterday's challenge as well. So, um, you know, just feel free to do it. Just feel free to take the challenge. Yes, great job, everyone. Thanks so much for submitting. Yeah. It was so fun to watch. So yeah, okay, we totally. are back in photoshop now um kind of coming to the end here where um so this is actually i believe i did get this from retro supply but this is another thing another fun kind of tool um where there's so many great resources on the internet so like i was talking about fonts earlier that you can find and and buy um these really like custom fonts by artists um and, and support them that way there's also different textures that you can find and plugins so this is one that i've um, been using lately um and it's just this butcher's paper effect so as you can see it um so that's alternate off um so this is just my my um regular piece that I did in um, the Fresco and Illustrator um, apps. And so as you can see, it, it feels very digital and, um, you know, that flat lay design. And so adding this texture really, um, you can, I'll zoom in. It feels like it's on this like- Oh yeah, great. That's thick, awesome. Starchy paper, which um, something that I, I always gravitate towards. Um, so, I, I really do like um, adding some texture in here. Whoops, okay, just made that a little too big. Um, okay, and so yeah, so basically um, what I did was just, I dropped it right in here and I, um, I'll i start to kind of play with the levels a little bit and make sure everything is still um, like popping. Um, but yeah, and I think I will actually probably go back and um, Potentially, if we have a little bit of time, drop it back into Fresco and add some more texture at the top now that we have all of our elements with the typographic stickers as well. Mm -hmm. But this this just gives us a little bit more of a pop. So again, um, I'll kind of show you the before and after. Does. But yeah, Julia, do you like to use any textures like when you're working or do you like more yeah, of that? Yeah, absolutely. 
Well, yeah, right. usually what I do is, uh, so I usually sketch something, let's say it's in fresco, and then I export the artwork. And I don't like the perfect look too much, so I'm usually adding some noise. So yeah. there's also a noise filter that you can uh, use. Um, it's kind of, you know, adding up this uh, these uh, little, little, you know, imperfections. Yeah, it makes it super fun, I think. Um, you can also use um, transparency like we do here. So yeah, that's... That's fun. Yeah. So. And it also changes the colors a little bit. So now you can see the white is not perfectly white anymore. It's more like this super light gray. And it's just, you know, make it, making it more realistic. Absolutely. Yeah, it just, it gives it that, that extra element that feels like, oh yeah, I can, I can actually like hold this and pick it up in my hand. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's really fun. So I just, yeah. I just added a little bit of texture and I am going to I think, airdrop that back and pull it up on in fresco again and add maybe uh -huh. a, a little bit more um, of those of that noise and, and use different um, different pixel brushes. So they pull up. Yeah, the uh, we only have a couple minutes left, I believe like four or five minutes. There's also a question regarding the textures. Uh, Christine and Car yeah. Carol are actually asking the same question. Uh, where do you get your, oh no, actually, actually Askia and Christine are asking, where um, do you usually find your uh, textures online? Yeah, so that's another thing where, again, a lot of the, these resources that we were talking about, um, whether it's that creative market or, um, the Retro Supply Co. is like another thing. Um, True Grit Texture, I think, is the other, um, yeah, that, that is the other um, resource that I really like. So again, a lot of these are these packages that you um, can buy and they're usually pretty cheap, especially because these are all like handmade by artists and um, it's mm -hmm. a cool way to support the art community as well as get these really unique textures that are not um yeah that you're not going to see everyone using like they're they're a lot more custom which i really really appreciate um yeah, yeah. awesome carol is also mentioning cg textures that it's a good one i have not used that one before but feel free to check it out and um carol is also um sending the link to textures.com so Maybe something awesome. worth checking out also. Hi, Claudie. Hello. Claudie's here. Hello. Good to see you. Claudie will be introducing the daily creative challenge to you guys. Let's take a quick look at the schedule, actually. Yeah. So after us, we're here at 9.30 until 11.30. Claudie is going to introduce the Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge that you can participate. And then Marisa Blair will do some XD with you guys, workflows and pro tips. And then Howard Prinsky is going to introduce the Adobe XD Daily Creative Challenge. So there's whole three Daily Creative Challenges you can get, you guys can participate. And uh, Paul Trani then and Veronica Belmont are going to finalize the day with Adobe Spark. So that's going to be fun too. There is a whole day of uh, streams, you know, it's good. Sounds awesome. I feel, like, I feel like people want to learn these days, you know, now that we are kind of at home and, uh, you know, trying to, trying to learn new things. I started learning a lot of new things. So that's amazing. Totally. And it's so cool. Like all the free resources, like everything is so, you know, really accessible for people to be able to learn um, where, yeah, you can, I mean, you can learn from people from all over the world and it's just, it's really exciting. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, so what exactly are you doing now? You just, uh, you're just using um, tech, like a pixel brush on top? Yeah, so I'm just, I'm kind of playing, I don't know if this necessarily needs more texture, but I'm kind of just playing with it a little bit. Um, so I have, I'll open up my pix pixel brushes and, um, so I've saved some of my favorite ones, um, uh, some of my favorite brushes. So we we're talking about the Kyle Webster T's brushes um, yesterday. But so basically this is, um, so this one is add green um, medium. So I just opened up a new layer and you can um, change the blend mode on this and also the opacity um, afterwards. But um, basically if I scroll in, you can kind of see that there's a oh, little bit of this. Oh, yeah. 
you know, texture going on. Yeah, um, that's cool. And then I'll go over here and play with the blend mode. And so you can really oh, just cool. kind of create some fun, different. Oh, that's awesome. I love the white. Chip. Oh, and, purple. Yeah, yeah, totally. And if that's too bright, you know, I can turn it down with my yeah. opacity and make it a lot more subtle because you don't want it to look like yeah. too in your face. Um, yeah. But yeah, totally so I think, agree. I think that's a cool, cool effect that I'll kind of run across the yeah. page with a little bit so again it just to me it kind of makes it feel more and more like oh this is like a real piece of paper or yeah. um and it's a piece of paper that have has been laying around somewhere and maybe exactly. there's some imperfections maybe somebody touched it or you know rubbed it exactly with, with some color yeah and i i mean again i love like collecting things especially like old things and so yeah, I, I love like when my work itself even looks like it might be like this like old, you know, advertisement or something that yeah. um, that would be something that I would collect um, myself. So, yeah, I love adding texture to my work. Yeah. Bethlehem is asking, what is this tool? So it's actually just a pixel brush. Can we quickly take a look what exactly what type of pixel brush that is? Absolutely. So this is the Kyle FX um, box. Mm -hmm. And so this is this comes with, again, your Creative Cloud subscription, all of these extra brushes. But basically, um, Fresco comes with so from basic up here to mm -hmm. um, to sketching, and then you can actually add more brushes down there. That's so awesome. Yeah, totally. And so, it's yeah. also set set as an overlay, right? Yes, yes. So this is set right now in, or I'm sorry, actually linear dodge. But you can, yeah, you can keep on playing. All with the right, Lisa Marie, on. we're about Hi. to end our stream. It was so fun watching you. It was, I feel like it was so inspiring, at least for me. I feel like many people in the chat are inspired to use uh, Fresco now. Thanks okay. for everyone for jo for joining us today. And um, yeah, stay tuned for the daily creative challenge with Ill an illustrator with Claudie. And again, thank you so much, Lisa. Thank you so much, Chad. And we'll see you soon. Yeah, thanks so much for having me, guys. This was awesome. Have a great rest of your day.